So my friends, what you need is the righteousness of Christ. The only way to get the righteousness of Christ is to repent of your sin and put your faith in Him, and He will forgive you and grant you eternal life. So I beg you and plead you tonight to do that. Turn from sin and turn to Christ. You put your faith and trust in Him. Because one day, my friend, like we said, you will draw your last breath, you will stand before your Creator in judgment. He will judge you by His righteousness. All your sin will be revealed, even your sinful thoughts. And if you've broken even the least, you're guilty before Him. And if that's all you stand there with is your works, your good deeds, He's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Rightfully so. And He'll be just in doing so because He is the holy, righteous Creator. And He does what He pleases. So what happens if you if you stand before God or you die and you haven't repented and trusted Christ? And He tells you to depart. Where do you depart to? He sends you to a place of torment where you receive His wrath for eternity. That's where you end up. I'm going to read it to you in Revelation 20. Let me get over there right quick. And we don't want this to happen to you, my friend. That's why we're here. We want you to have forgiveness of sin and eternal life. And please do this. Please repent and put your trust in Christ and Him alone. Listen to this in Revelation 20, 30 and verse 11. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and Him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. So that's what happens to your works. You're judged according to the works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up and the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now listen to this. This is speaking of those who, when they die, they stand before the Creator, and they haven't repented and trusted Christ. It's game over. And look, this is what you will receive. It says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And my friends, we don't want that from you, for you. That's why we beg you and plead with you to turn from sin and turn to Christ and put your faith in Him. That's what we want for you. We want you to be reconciled to God to repent, to put your trust in Him, and to be saved forever. There's only two options, my friend. Repent and trust Christ for eternal salvation and life with Him forever, or reject that and be cast into the lake of fire and pay your sin debt for eternity. How long is eternity anyway? We can't comprehend that, can we? The Bible says life is but a vapor. It's only here for a little while, then it's gone. So just say, even if you live to be a hundred on the grand scale of the eternal timeline, what does that look like? It's not even a speck. So my friends, this life is short. And we focus so hard on accomplishing things in this life. And make, having accomplishments is not bad in and of itself. But don't do, do that and neglect eternity. Think about 10,000 years from now. What is going to matter to you most? 10,000 years from now. Is that next beer going to matter? Is having sex with that next young man or young woman, is that going to matter? Is the number of times you got drunk, is that going to matter? Is your college degree going to matter? Is the wealth you stored up going to matter? Is any of that going to matter? If you win the Nobel Peace Prize 10,000 years from now, is that going to matter to you? The answer is a resounding no. The only thing that's going to matter to all of us 10,000 years from now is where we're at. Are we going to be in the lake of fire? Paying for our sin debt where the worm dies not? Or are we going to be with our Creator in heaven? It's one or the other. Where are we going to be 10,000 years from now? That's all that's going to matter, my friend. So please take a few moments from these worldly things, from this life, and think about that. Think about that. We have a tendency to make plans for everything. When our children are little, we make plans for them to go to college. Then they make plans for their kids to go to college. Then they make plans for their career. They make plans for their family. They make plans on vacations. 
where they're going to live, what they're going to do. They make plans for retirement, how they're going to spend that time. But my friend, if we don't plan for eternity, how foolish are we? If we make all these plans for this speck on the timeline of eternity and, and neglect eternity, how foolish are we going to feel that day when we find ourselves before our Creator in our sin? How foolish will we feel then? All this stuff will not matter. Will not matter at all. Will not matter. That's not going this world. We have bad things happen. Like just this week, for instance, I've had a phone die that cost me a couple hundred bucks. My AC unit in my house is out right now. It's going to cost me several thousand bucks. But you know what? None of that matters. Used to, that would have stressed me out and I would have worried myself sick about that. But I don't even care now because you know what? Because God promises that He's going to take care of me and I'm a child of God. And no matter what happens in this life, He's never going to leave me nor forsake me. And you see other people, they suffer with sickness or disease. And that also reminds us that nothing of earthly uh, treasure is it really, it's not even important. It's not even the grand scheme of things. It is not even worth a thought in reality most of the time. So forget about this worldly stuff for a moment and think about eternity. Think about your soul. Think about where you're going to end up. Think about death. Death comes to each one of us. 150,000 of us die every day. Leave planet Earth. Step into eternity. Some are old. Some are in their 80s. Some are in their 50s. Some are young kids. But 150,000 people die every day. And the ultimate statistic is that 10 out of 10 people die. And so it's going to happen to all of us. Sometimes I think we try to push that aside and put it in the back of our minds and not even think about it. But we need to, my friend, because we don't know when that day is going to come. And the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So I beg you and I plead with you to turn from that sin, turn to Christ to put your faith and your trust in Him and Him alone. And if you do that, the Bible says that He will pardon you from your just reward, which is the wrath of God. He will forgive you. He will free you from the bondage of sin. Your whole attitude will change about sin. You'll no longer love it and want to swim in it, but you'll want to flee from it. And you will be granted eternal life in heaven. And He will give you purpose. He will give you the ministry of reconciliation like He has all believers. And then you will go and you will share your faith with others so that they too can repent and trust Christ and not pay their own sin debt to the lake of fire, but they can be forgiven and have eternal life in heaven. Just remember, my friends, one sin, the Bible says you break one of the least, you're guilty of all. So it doesn't matter if you're better than that person you're standing next to on the street corner. It's just the fact that you're guilty is all that's going to matter because you stand alone before your Creator. And He judges you according to your deeds. And we all have sin, my friends. The only way to wipe away that sin debt is to put your trust in Christ. So please today, turn from sin and turn to Him and put your trust and faith in Him and Him alone for salvation. 